Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about yet another unusual discovery coming from the center of our own galaxy. Something that's reminiscent of a discovery from a few years ago known as Fermi Bubbles. But it seems that the Fermi Bubbles are actually located inside a much larger set of even bigger bubbles, for whom we don't really have a name yet, although some scientists propose we call them Erosita Bubbles. But let me explain what all of this means and why we want to call them that. First of all, we're going to go to my favorite map of the galaxy, the map known as Gleemoscope that allows us to see the galaxy in different frequencies that are invisible to human eyes. For example, we have a pretty good map of the galaxy in the infrared, the microwave light, and also the radio light. But there was one map that was always lacking, it wasn't very detailed, the so-called X-ray map. Even the gamma ray map was much better than that, mostly because of the very prolific Fermi gamma ray telescope or observatory that you see right here. And approximately 10 years ago, the Fermi telescope discovered these unusual bubbles in the center of the galaxy. Today we refer to them as the Fermi bubbles, named after the telescope that's actually named after the scientist who didn't really have anything to do with the telescope but he's famous for a lot of other things. The scientist of course being Enrico Fermi. But to essentially remedy this problem of not having a very good x-ray map and to really just study the universe in the x-rays a little bit better, the German and the Russian scientists have been working on this telescope known as Erosita for a very very long time. And it was finally launched last year and put into the L2 Lagrange point where it still is today as well. And it essentially has been orbiting the region right there for approximately a year and a half now allowing us to essentially create an extremely accurate x-ray map of the entire night skies that we've never really been able to see before. Here's how this compares to the old map, and you can see that now we have a lot of really detailed observations of many different objects we've never really seen before. And in case you were wondering about what you're actually seeing in this image, here's a brief description of some of the major objects in this particular map. This was created by the Erosita team, describing some of the major objects, such as for example, the Crab Pulsar visible right there, the Vela Supernova Remnant, a large Magellanic Cloud, the nearby galaxy, a lot of really powerful X-ray objects right here, including Cygnus X1, which is most likely a black hole, and also obviously the brightest X-ray object, Scorpius X1, which is most likely a neutron star that orbits and consumes another star producing these extremely powerful X-ray emissions. But of particular interest to scientists have always been this location that you can kind of see right here, known as the North Polar Spur. Even previous observations and previous analysis suggested that this spur right here seems to create unusual loop-like formations which may have been a result of some sort of a supernova that created this very large and very unusual X-ray formation. But something still didn't really make sense here and it did seem to be extremely large and way too powerful. And this was obviously a question that only Erosita, also known as the Spectro Telescope or Spectro Observatory, also known as SRG Observatory, could answer and could help us resolve once and for all. Only a few months ago, Erosita released its first official map of the night skies, showing us, well, essentially what's going on out there. And a lot of scientists got to work trying to figure out if they can actually discover something that might explain some of these effects. Naturally, the study that we're talking about today may have discovered what seems to be one of the largest, if not the largest, formations in the galaxy. The formations that don't really have a name just yet, but as I mentioned, a lot of scientists are already referring to them as Erosita bubbles, which is of course kind of similar to the Fermi bubbles named after the Fermi observatory. And in terms of the actual size and the structure of everything, this is kind of what all of this would look like. A lot of these images and a lot of this data is from the University of Tübingen. And so what we're looking at here are the Fermi bubbles in purple, this is the discovery from around 10 years ago, with the diameter right here being around 20,000 light years. The solar system itself is somewhere right here and we see some of the galactic arms here as well. And the part that's in yellow, that's essentially the new discovery. These are the X-ray bubbles, which are roughly around 45,000 light years in height. 
And obviously because of the similarity in shape and also because of the overall similarity in the location of these bubbles, the Fermi and the Erosita bubbles, the scientists currently believe that they are definitely related in terms of the potential creation and the potential origin of these objects. But obviously at the moment we don't really know what caused them. Maybe one of the explanations here could be that the galaxy went through its active galactic nucleus stage where a tremendous amount of energy was expelled similar to the nearby Centaurus A that you see right here, which by the way is also sort of visible on the X3 map as well. Or some other major galactic event in the center of the galaxy that released a tremendous amount of energy may have occurred in the past, causing all of this energy to escape from the center and to create these bubbles. With the bubbles themselves representing a kind of a shock wave that was created when the energy collided with a lot of hot gas that's surrounding the galaxy itself. But most interestingly is that the scientists behind the study were now able to connect this structure to the mysterious North Polar Spur, which means that the North Polar Spur itself is most likely a part of the large bubble. Unlike the initial assumption that it was some kind of a supernova close to us, it's more likely to be much much farther away and actually just represents the bubble itself at a distance of several thousand uh, light years away from us. With this part itself being at least 20 to 30 thousand light years across, much much larger than we initially thought. But unlike the shape similarity, there are also important differences between the Fermi and the new Erosita bubbles. Obvious differences of course are in frequencies, so these are gamma rays, they are much higher in energy, whereas these are X-rays, overall slightly lower in energy, whereas these ones are X-rays, so they are slightly lower in energy, but Fermi bubbles also most likely formed at a later period of time, simply because they are closer to the center. While at the same time Fermi bubbles were most likely caused by something that was at least 10 times less energetic, despite higher frequencies. Once again, because of the amount of total energy available in the Fermi bubbles compared to the new Erosita bubbles. Previous calculations suggested that the Fermi bubbles may have been formed when something around the total force of about 20,000 supernova exploded in the middle of the galaxy, but the new bubbles, the ones that are much larger in X-rays, were most likely created by something that was at least 5 times more powerful, 100,000 supernova which is not that different from a typical active galactic nucleus that we normally find around us that produce a lot of energy and a lot of light. So for example, like a typical quasar would produce this much energy during an outburst. But whatever this was, no matter what it was, was extremely powerful and seems to have happened twice, with two different very distinct productions of energy, which essentially resulted in two different types of bubbles produced in the middle all of which most likely happened a few million years ago, with a slight pause and then it happened again. But the detection itself is obviously not finished yet because the Erosita mission is still going on and it's still mapping even more detail of the night skies. So we're going to have a much better map in possibly a few months from now and the scientists will be able to, well, most likely discover something else about this object and also possibly about the Fermi bubbles as well, which will definitely help us understand what may have happened in our galaxy a few million years ago to create such an unusual and very powerful formation, something that's over 50,000 light years across. And by the way, the scientist from Tübingen from the university that was responsible for this study also produced this beautiful image to show us what all of this would have looked like to us if we could see the X-rays and the gamma rays with our own eyes. But since we can't, we have to rely on Erosita and the Fermi telescopes. But despite the mysteries created by this discovery, there's also a few questions that have been answered, at least in regards to the formations or formation of different galaxies in general. For example, we know that a lot of mass resides in the cosmic filament and also in the halo of the galaxies themselves. So when something energetic happens in a typical galaxy, the halo starts to experience it by releasing a lot of energy around it. And so this right here indeed shows us that the halo of the galaxy, the gas around it, does interact with the extremely energetic events happening inside the galaxy in the galactic core. Which then also has a lot of influence on the intergalactic medium around our galaxy, most likely changing its chemical composition and changing the energy content of the material around the galaxy. In other words, whatever happened a few million years ago, this energetic event, 
release so much energy that it's now lighting up this cocoon of gas and all kinds of material around our galaxy, making it actually visible to us so we can study it in more detail. Otherwise, this gas would have been invisible to us. At the same time, this provides yet another indirect proof for the existence of dark matter and for our understanding of how the galaxies form and grow. One of the theories suggests that generally when the actual dark matter halo collapses, it starts to heat up a lot of the plasma located around the galaxy. And by detecting these bubbles, we can now definitively say that the plasma in our galaxy can actually be reheated as suggested by these dark matter ideas. In other words, it does provide a few indirect proofs to what we already knew about galaxies and does suggest that dark matter could be real after all. But all of this will be even more clear to us once we get a better map coming from Erosita in the next few months. Until then, we can only wait and see what else the scientists can find using this current map and also what other discoveries they make about the X-ray galaxy, the map of which we didn't really have before. So in this case, time will show, but we'll definitely find some other incredible discoveries coming from this telescope and coming from these investigations from German and Russian scientists. But until then, thank you for watching, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.